good day, hue dach, molweni, a warm welcome to all prospective students and parents. I'm Professor Mbrungen Madiba, the Dean of the Faculty of Education at Stellenbosch University. Congratulations on being awarded provisional admission to our faculty. This is a huge achievement for you as you have been selected from over 26,691 students who applied for admission for 2024. You have a fantastic opportunity and we hope you will seriously consider accepting the offer. If you have the desire to be equipped by education leaders in South Africa, this faculty is the place for you. Our faculty is one of the leading faculties in the country and its international ranking improved tremendously during 2022 and 2023. We moved up 150 places in the education discipline in the Times Higher Education World University rankings. Our graduates are equipped with 21st century skills such as creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and many other valuable skills. We pride ourselves in producing graduates who are globally competent and locally relevant. I hope you will accept the offer to study at our faculty, and I wish you all the best for your future. Good day and welcome to the Faculty of Education at Stellenbosch University. My name is Zoe Grace Bennett and I'm the chairperson of the Education Student Committee. Along with me today and joining on the panel, we have the Vice Dean of Teaching and Learning, Professor Michael Likadier. We have two students who are also on the Education Student Committee. We have Nadia Parker, who is a third year foundation phase student, and we have George Jonker, who is a final year intermediate phase student. And we also have a senior lecturer within our faculty, Dr. Louise Puerta. Now, I know that you're in such a stressful position and predicament as you need to make the correct decision as to what you're going to study and where you're going to study. So I hope that in today's session, you'll get clarity and a, piece of, and a sense of peace to make that decision. So handing over to Professor Lecudia. What would you advise or what do you have to say about the Faculty of Education having experienced your fair share of being the Vice Dean and being a part of the faculty? What, what points out the faculty among all other faculties and that could hopefully convince our prospective first year students to choose Stellenbosch University? Yes, thank you for the question, Zoe, and good evening to our audience, Julia um, Nand. Thank you for the question. You see, uh, I can almost also ask you how much time do you have uh, because uh, we've been here for, for some while. Let me first say that uh, as has been mentioned by Zoe, I am the Vice Dean for Teaching and Learning, which means that uh, I will probably be the person that you will be coming to most often because I'm dealing with teaching and learning issues such as your classes, your timetables, uh, your research as well and also of course bursaries so I'm looking forward to meeting you once you are on, on the campus. Question would be you know why would you want to become a teacher? Now first and foremost I can tell you that you know being a teacher is probably one of the most important jobs in our community no matter who you identify with outside this campus or whoever they are I can assure you that they have come up in their lives. They have met a particular teacher or a school that has sort of galvanized them to become the person that you are today. So teaching is important. And South Africa, we need teachers desperately. 15,000 a year, the Minister of Education tells me. So thank you for applying and thank you for applying to Stellenbosch University. Uh, we must be doing something right because if we receive 40,000 applications and we have only seats for 260, it tells you something about this university. We pride ourselves that we are a leading faculty of education, not just in South Africa, but also on the continent of, of Africa. In fact, recently this faculty uh, has been rated the second best faculty in South Africa and we are striving to, to become better 
because eventually we would want to be the best so that we can give you the best in our classes. Speaking of which, in your classes you will be able to, to, to meet some of the most renowned scholars in education in this country. I can think here of Professor Jonathan Janssen, who is a world-renowned scholar in democratic education. I think of Professor Yusuf Wahid, who is widely recognized for his research in the philosophy of education, not to mention our own dean, Professor Mbulu Madiba, who is a renowned scholar in multilingualism. Yes, at this faculty, we pride ourselves that we do offer our teaching and learning in a multilingual way. Veel taligheid is voor ons belangrijk. Ons wil he dat ons studenten moet zoveel as moeilijk talen leren, maar vooral Engels, Afrikaans en Isitkosa, want dit is ons ambtelijke talen. We, we, we offer most of our lectures in English, but there will always be a summary in Afrikaans, and we do not send anybody away from this campus who cannot speak Isitkosa. And we're trying to, 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 to be better in that regard as far as possible. Speaking of, of, of courses, we, we do offer a few courses in this Faculty of Education. You can become a, a foundation phase teacher if you have a, the love of the little ones from grade 1 to grade 3. You can become an intermediate phase teacher if you want to teach in the primary school. For that you will have to enroll for the B. It degree in education, which is of course a four-year course. Maar ons bied ook uh, aan vir jou die geleentheid om a hoge school onderwijsend te word. Yes, you can become a high school teacher, but then of course you will have to follow the route of the PGCE, which is the Postgraduate Certificate in Education, but you must do a, a first degree beforehand. You can even continue your studies if you, if you so wish, you, could, you can do an honours, you can do the masters and even a PhD. By the way, we pride also ourselves that we at this faculty are the only faculty who offer the masters program to become an educational psychologist and only two in the country. And we are really proud of our colleagues in the Department of Educational Psychology. So, yeah. If there's anything else you would like to me to, to explain to the audience, Zoe? I think, Prof, if we could maybe give the audience a sense of a few lectures who maybe released least um, research studies, um, just to brag a bit about our lectures and student achievements as well. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, maybe I should say that, uh, as you all know, if you are going to be a teacher, you will, of course, identify what uh, module or what subject you want to, to, uh, to do in research in or to go, to go and study. You can become, for instance, in our faculty, a teacher for maths and science. We do offer you the uh, opportunity to become a teacher for history or geography or economics and accountancy, even life orientation and also computer science, because uh, being able to work and to study online is important for us. Uh, since COVID, uh, our institution has gone hybrid, meaning we do offer our classes both face-to-face, -face, and then we combine that with teaching and learning in an online space. And that blended learning we have found, uh, it, it, it will work for us, and, and I'm sure it, uh, that many of you out there, you are fond of computers, fond of your cell phones. So if that's the way to go, we can assure you that, you, that, that we do offer the opportunity to, to study, in fact, online. In fact, at this university, we, we do have very good uh, uh, resources. Most of you, if not all of you, you will have access to our computer lab where you can do your research online, you can do your assignments online, do your research and uh, go online, find the best sources for your assignments, etc. We also offer you the opportunity to, to work in our international standard library where you have access to, to thousands of books and articles. They have more than enough space for you to sit down and to, and to study 
and, and to tap into all these resources that will be available for you. And uh, so, so we're really looking forward that you, that once you are on campus, that you will make use of all these kind of facilities. It's not just all about education, not just all about academics at San Jose University. We do offer you a life outside of the classroom as well. So it, yes, we are fond of sport and culture. You, you will have the opportunity to support the Martis rugby team in, in the Danny Craven st Stadium. You might be able to watch the, the athletics team on, in the Kutzenberg Stadium. And in the very near future, we will be having our, our annual Wurtfeest, which is something great at Stellenbosch and something that we are very excited about. So, if you can combine all of that with our beauty, the nature, our beautiful mountains, uh, I can promise you, you might just not want to leave Salambos once you have settled down here in the shade of our old oak trees and in the shade of that beautiful Simonsburg uh, in, in, in the far north. So from my side, I just want to say welcome, welcome. We're looking forward to working with you and we're looking forward to this journey for the next four years. Thank you so much, Prof, and I can attest to everything that Prof just said. As a third year student, and it'd be my final year next year, I'm not ready to say goodbye. But before we carry on, I would just like to inform you that we do have scheduled load shedding at 6 o'clock, so there might be a power outage for a few seconds, so you will maybe be required to, to deload the page and um, to join the, um, the video again um, or the live again, but um, we hope that that's not the case. But now we will be having a look at the Stellenbosch University campus tour. This is Martiland the home of Stellenbosch University. Here, you will receive a world-class education and have the time of your life. There is space for 7,500 students in a myriad of different residence options on the main campus while a further 1,000 students are housed in five residences on Tigerberg campus. Our students are those who are curious to know, those who want to change the world and their own lives for the better. The diverse student community is a vibrant testimony to a future-driven campus which caters for the needs of all students. The Nielsi Student Center is a popular get-together spot right at the heart of campus. At Stellenbosch University, you are connected to the world through excellent technology. Across campus, there are six faculty-specific computer user areas to complement our state-of-the-art institution. Each faculty offers their students access to a variety of disciplines and the opportunity to be exposed to the finer things in life. Our beautiful campus has paved walkways winding between campus buildings dating from different eras. Here you have free access to the one-of-a-kind beauty of Stellenbosch town and its breathtaking natural surroundings. The superb sport facilities nurture some of the country's best athletes and afford every other active student the chance to keep fit and healthy. Make Stellenbosch University part of your journey today. Fall in love with life. Fall in love with Martiland. we are back. We will now be hearing from our students within the faculty. We'll first start with Nadia Parker. Nadia, 
As a third year foundation phase student, what are the expectations that prospective first year students can expect when stepping foot into the faculty for the first time? So thank you for your question, Zoe. Um, being a first year can be quite intimidating. And I think that's because of the transition, um, the significant transition from a structured environment from high school to a more self-directed and independent nature of university. However, the education faculty of Stellenbosch University makes that transition so easy for their first years. I remember when I had my first day of orientation week, I was welcomed with open arms by our mentor program that supports first years in all aspects of the university journey. Um, and I cannot stress enough how important it is for first years to attend that welcoming week and in that orientation period at the faculty, um, not only because they're going to learn so much about the faculty that they're going to be spending every single day in for the next four years, but they will um, go on a faculty tour where they can familiarize themselves with the environment. They will meet uh, staff members, uh, senior students, the ESC, which is the Education Student Committee, selected by the students for the students to support them and help them when help is needed. Um, they will meet their class reps, mentors, um, people who want to help them when they are struggling and when they need the help. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's so important to come to the welcoming week period at the faculty. They will participate in socials and events and a fun day and a mentor day and they'll have so much fun because the education faculty wants their first years to feel comfortable and to feel safe in their space and to feel welcomed. Um, so yes, and I feel that the education faculty really emphasizes the importance of a balanced student life. And I like to use the saying there is time for play and there is time for work. Um, and as George will tell you, my, my fellow peer, <laughs> um, that it is so important to enjoy every aspect of the student life. However, university is not high school. University it requires a lot of hard work and consistency from the get-go. And as a first year, you will choose the program that you wish to study. So foundation phase, grade R to grade three, or intermediate phase, um, grade four to grade six. And they, and they differ in terms of modules. So foundation phase teachers will study mathematics, English, Afrikaans, and um, life skills. Because as a foundation phase teacher, you're teaching all the subjects to the young ones. And then uh, intermediate phase, you do mathematics, English, Afrikaans, and then you specialize in a subject such as natural science or social sciences like uh, geography or history. Um, you will find in first year that sometimes you will have joint classes um, and that will merely be because your foundation phase and intermediate phase first years will have the same module and then you will be able to mix with each other in those modules. Um, so yes, we have face-to-face -face classes, which means you come with your laptop or your, your paper and your pen and you engage with the content that the lecturer is lecturing. Um, we also have something called tutorials, uh, short-term tuts. They are smaller classes um, made up of about 10 to 15 students uh, where you can have in-depth uh, discussions and conversations on the content that was taught in the lecture. It's also just a space for students to feel more comfortable to share their opinions um, rather than being a little bit nervous in a big lecture hall with a hundred other students. Um, and then in terms of assessments, um, some modules uh, require the students to write exams but the education faculty makes use of continuous assessments. Why continuous assessments? Because it promotes, promotes um, continuous engagement with the material that is taught and discourages last minute cramming and for you to understand the content more in depth. Um, so yes, and then I also, know very well that language can be a big deciding factor 
for students when coming or choosing to study at Stellenbosch University. The two official languages of Stellenbosch University is English and Afrikaans. And you will find in the education faculty that the lecturers will mix between the two languages, Afrikaans and English. So if they teach in Afrikaans, they will translate to English. And if they teach in English, they will translate to Afrikaans. But I want to make first years aware of the SU Language Center that really does offer many opportunities and services for learners to learn in the language that they prefer. And this is something that I didn't know in first year. I actually only learned about it last year. But there's a service where someone will come to the lecture, sit in the lecture, have a microphone, and will give the lecture to you as you have earphones in your ears in the language that you prefer. So there is ways for you to learn in the language that you prefer. So yes, first year in the education faculty is amazing and it's, a, it's an experience you have to have. Thank you so much Nadia for that. And now to George, as a final year student who had your fair share of experiences and trauma and the goods and the bads, what has your experience been like as a final year intermediate phase student from the moment you stepped foot into the faculty in 2020 until where we currently are in 2020, October? Well, thank you so much for the question. Um, I appreciate it. And I'd just like to say that I'm extremely um, humble overall, and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to be here. Um, I think as a general rule, don't think about it too much. Take a day for day, um, and I think just enjoy yourself as a student, specifically from your first day in the first year. Don't think too much, don't look too far ahead, but still keep in mind that the end goal is only four years away, which may seem like a long time, but I promise you that it's definitely not. Um, I think two of the more important concerns that we see on campus though, firstly is the balance between work life and social life. And I think it's important to keep that balance specifically with um, academic work. Um, having assignments and having tests and having discussions and group assessments is extremely important and to keep your mind open for these things and to have good discussions requires a balance between your work and social life. Um, and then secondly, we have seen an influx with mental health concerns, but luckily we do have support systems for those in place as well, which we'll, I'll get back to in a few minutes. Um, I think a few misconceptions with the degree that we um, are currently pursuing, specifically with intermediate phase and foundation phase, is the fact that this is not a backup degree. It, this is supposed to be your first choice and your only choice. If you start your first day thinking that you're going to change it because you may, uh, may not, maybe not don't like it, then you're definitely in the wrong space. I think it's extremely important to keep in mind that you are the change of the next generation, which will be the change for their following generation as well. So if you are still contemplating, please do um, ensure that you make your decision correctly. And then secondly, this is definitely not high school to the extent or in the sense that in high school you need 30 to 40 percent to pass um, your subjects there's a minimum requirement of 50 percent at our faculty to pass any module and to continue that you actually need 65 percent in um, a lot of other uh, modules as well so as an example if you prefer Afrikaans home language and you'd like to continue that into your second year from your first year you need 65 percent and not 50 percent otherwise you need to take it as a first additional language module um, with that being said, the balance between work and social life also has a fun side, and I think it's important to mention the fun side as well. So there are honestly too many things to mention for the amount of fingers that I have on my hands. So I'd love to just mention a few things to do in Stellenbosch specifically. Um, and starting off, there are numerous wine farms. I think Stellenbosch is known as wine country. So definitely grab a friend and go for a wine route and a wine tasting. Um, usually you get it paired with cheese, but anyway. Um, secondly, there is Dorp Street, which is home to one of the most beautiful environments that you'll probably ever see in your life with very old buildings and museums. And on that note, um, I'd like to recommend going to the, uh, the, the numerous amount of museums that we have um, in Stellenbosch. Um, I believe that there are more than four or five, if I'm not mistaken. Then for the nature lovers, we have the Botanical Garden, which is about a two minute walk from campus. Um, there's also a small coffee shop in the middle of it, um, which 
is amazing. Um, they're quite cheap as well. But <laughs> I would recommend going there if you just need that small break from your academic life. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on that note, the, we also have Yonkershook Nature Reserve, which is amazing for hiking um, and maybe th uh, taking your dog out if you stay on, um, in, in the town. Um, there's also numerous amounts of restaurants within walking distance. Um, I don't think if you had any restaurant lined up, you would probably walk less than 10 minutes if it's even that far. And it's, it's a safe environment. Um, I think there are numerous support services um, and safety services, um, specifically with campus security and all of those things. They have a 24-hour hotline which you can call as well, so if at any point you feel unsafe, you can just give them a call and they'll definitely escort you to your residence um, or your place of, of staying. Um, but to get back to a little bit more serious note, with support services on campus, there are numerous services which are free, of course, to help you in assisting your, uh, you with your degree and with your journey in the, uh, well, over these four years. Um, to start off specifically, I would definitely recommend coming to the ESC, the Education Student Committee. As we are in the faculty, there's an office on the bottom floor. We are about 10 students, if I'm not mistaken, each with their own portfolio and a few of them specifically catering to students' needs um, and your concerns that you might have. Um, if you want to take it up to a further level or a higher level, you have the SRC, the Student Representative Council, who are the representatives of, uh, of the entire student body from the university itself, with all, uh, from all the faculties. They also, um, I think, have an open door policy, and they're on the top floor, so it's super accessible to anyone. Um, then we also have a free service um, from the university called the Center for Student Counseling. So if you have any concerns with regards to mental health problems or issues, um, I think they also have a walk-in policy where you can literally just show up or make an appointment, walk in and state, um, state your say, and they'll definitely help you and assist you with that. And then lastly, I think it's super important to make use of um, your peers and professors because they are definitely here to help you. You're not alone in this journey, and I think it's super important to keep that in mind. Thank you so much, George. Um, and I can attest to the last point that George spoke on in saying that your lectures um, your professors essentially lectures, they back you 100% of the way. Something that I've experienced over my years at being, with being in the faculty is that my lectures are often my biggest supporters and my biggest motivators. The lectures at the Faculty of Education have an open door policy in which they are more than w willing to assist you, to help you with anything. So by all means, we have the best lectures, just saying. <laughs> Reason number one as to why you should choose the Faculty of Education. Um, but we're going to take a quick look at another campus video and then we'll be back. Who we become depends on the choices we make. And what we choose is influenced by what we think, what we learn, what we dream. Who we become is shaped by what we stand for. Because when we uphold others' dignity, appreciate diversity and work for equality, we are our best selves. Who we become is inspired by the people around us. Our mentors, our teachers, our family, our colleagues, our friends. Who we become and what we achieve is the sum of all the opportunities we embrace, all the roads we travel. Discover Stellenbosch University where who you become will transcend even your own expectations. Where we stand together, where we move forward together. And we are back. I do just want to say before we carry on is that a uh, reminder about the load shedding that we have. So if there is a slight drop in a few minutes, um, we will be back. But over to Dr. Louise Puerta. Dr. Puerta, um, they are most likely parents who are watching with their um, kids at the moment. So as a parent who put your kids through university and being awarded that opportunity, um, in which ways would, did you essentially support your kids throughout the journey? What advice can you provide to parents um, and why is it essential that they stand behind the children and support them as they enter this next chapter in their lives? So very, very important and I think you're keeping the best for last. <laughs> um, I think the parent support is, is very important. You've heard from our um, third year and fourth year students. You've also heard from our vice dean, Professor Lacordia about um, our students coming into a new environment. 
They are challenged with um, adjustments that they don't know of yet. Um, and especially if your child is in a residence uh, far from home, they need the um, uh, parent support more so. Uh, children that stay at home in town have a different kind of support system. We heard from George now that you can even take your dog for a walk uh, when you stay in town. Now that is not true for our students staying in res. They can't bring their dogs with them. Uh, they're furry friends, as they say. So that could be some of the things that the parents uh, need to realize that they are taken out of the comfortable environments. Also, as Nadia said, that uh, coming from high school, going into university environments is, is also challenging because suddenly you are free. You've got a free feeling of, uh, I don't have to listen to what everybody says, but that is not true. Um, you have to have um, rules, um, regulations in place to, to create a safe space on campus as well. You've also heard about the support systems that is in place. And that is why I want to encourage you as parents to uh, be knowledgeable about these uh, systems that is in place. If you um, inquire from the, the faculty even, uh, or look through the yearbooks that is available on, on, on online, um, you will have a variety of information to support that. Talking about support, um, your, your child also needs um, emotional support going through a lot of adjustments, as I already said. Uh, picking up the phone once in a while, not every day though, because then you're interfering. And that's one thing I learned, learned not to interfere while your child is in the academic um, uh, study space. But pick up the phone, video call, which is much easier these days, um, and just make a connection. Have that open communication with your child to understand what they're going through we do pick up a lot of health issues these days because um, students are struggling with a lot of stress. It is a different environment, so give that support to your child. What your child will also need is some guidance, especially financial guidance, um, because n they feel free. They, they can spend as they want to. I see a lot of smiles going around. So they need to also have a budget. Talk budget with your child. I mean, that is very important. Um, so that they also learn not only to study into a profession, but also how are they going to support themselves when they go out uh, into their profession um, uh, one day. Then also how to plan. I mean, plan properly. Um, holidays are for holidays, academic semesters are for academic semesters. So plan that properly and don't ask your lecturers to go um, on holiday during a semester. You know what the plan is, you know what your date is and we need the parent support in that as well. Um, something that is also very important is um, to stay informed, as I said, um, and that comes with also open communication with your, with, your, with your child. If you are worried that something is going wrong, uh, you see there's a drop in marks, uh, or you can see your child might be a bit depressed, you are allowed to uh, contact a lecturer and say, listen, I'm worried about my child, what is happening. But remember, your child has uh, open conversation with your lecturers as well, and the child needs to know that you as a parent will communicate with a lecturer if there is a problem. You cannot do it without the consent of your student child. Um, other support systems that I can think of is um, choices that you, uh, your unused learners uh, your student child will make. Um, they might be very happy in the choice they made in a foundation phase program, for instance. But once they are there for one or two weeks, then they find that I'm not so sure if I can work with little children. I would rather want to study in intermediate phase, for instance. Help your child make the right decision and, in, that, in that instance. They are allowed to change from one program to another program if they um, adhere to the requirements of that program. So don't hold your child back if they want to make those changes or choices that they've made originally. They grow into a system. And that is what we also find is, you think this is the way I want to go, but once you are there, you find different things um, which you would like to explore as well. So I think listening to our students and to Professor Le Cordier and myself as a parent, two main things open communication 
and support. And I think then your child will be a happy, happy uh, Stellenbosch University first year student. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Boeta. Um, from personal experience, I don't know how I would have got gotten through university if it wasn't for the support of my parents. Shame. Um, Fortunately, home isn't too far away, um, but my mom is quite concerned and she always just pops me a message, are you surviving? <laughs> so yes, I can truly attest that it really, it helps you as a student and it's beneficial when your parents are supporting you throughout it. Um, and it's quite true about budgets <laughs> because being a student is so tough in Stellenbosch. Like George um, mentioned, there's so many things to do and it all sometimes requires spending. But that is the panel discussion for today's session. We would love to hear from you. So please pop us a message via WhatsApp and we will gladly and happily answer your questions. Um, the WhatsApp number will be displayed at the bottom of the screen as well. But in the meantime, while we do wait for questions, we do have possible questions um, that prospective first year students often ask us, which we will, um, we can hop on that so long. So the first question, and I think Prof Liquidier, if you maybe want to answer it, um, what are possible bursary options as an education student? Yeah, that is perhaps the most important question. I'm getting it every single day. Look, uh, at Stellenbosch, they, let me first of all say that they, there are many bursaries uh, at Stellenbosch University. So first and foremost, you need to make sure that you know exactly where is the bursary office and uh, uh, look in your, your year calendar for the, the email address and for the telephone numbers of your bursary office. That is the first point that, that you must, must stop. But from my side, I would recommend there are two main bursaries that will uh, be on offer at a university such as Salon Bosch. The one is, of course, it's called the Nisvas bursary, which I do. Uh, is, it's very popular, but it would, it would not be my first choice. Uh, the second one would be the Funza Lusaka bursary, which is tailor-made for education students. And that is the one that I would recommend most because uh, if you do... Uh, get the Funza Lusaka bursary, the uh, nice thing about that is of course that Funza will be looking to employ you as a teacher somewhere in the country as a means of paying back for, if we can call it a favor that you have been given by the government. But then at least, first of all, of, uh, you, of all you are uh, secured of financing, but secondly, you will also be assured of a teaching post after completion of your studies. I would really recommend the Funza Lusaka bursary. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, and the next question we have is, and this is what uh, we just got the question now. So it's what, what is the jump like from high school to university? And I think Nadia, you touched on it briefly, um, but in a nuts, um, nuts, um, nutshell, sorry, <laughs> in a nutshell to um, maybe the, um, the individual missed your, sec um, your session, but um, in a nutshell to just sum it up briefly. I think, uh, the, was it the jump from high school yes, to, university? to university? It is really scary, I will not lie. I found it to be very scary mm -hmm. and very nervous because I felt like I was being pushed into this world and somebody told me to swim. <laughs> and it's really about just trying to find your feet and being yourself. And you need to remember you are here for a reason, um, and academics first always, and you have a passion and you must go after that passion. Stay focused on why you are here um, and just go with that. Like George said, don't overthink it too much. Um, get involved as much as you can in societies and committees. Make it the first year experience that you would want for someone else or for your child when you think about that um, one day. But it is scary, but there are so many support systems. There are people that are willing to help you along the way, parents, people in your faculty, people in your residence, if you live in residence, people um, on campus. And the thing is, really make use of other senior students. Go to them and speak to them. Tell them, I'm struggling with this. Please, can you help me? They were there once, and they got through it, so they can help you. And 
the people in the education faculty, we are, we are teachers after all. I promise you we are the most friendliest people I've ever met in my entire life. We're always willing yeah. to help. So yeah. Thank you, Nadia. Um, and then the next question may, we... May I, may yes, I yes, of course, Prof. You know, uh, may I also add to what has been said by Nadia, and that is, uh, remember to ask. Never be too shy to ask. Whether it is your, your lecturer, whether it is your classmate, or whether it's a member of the education committee, there will always be somebody who would know how to help. Don't keep quiet. It, uh, and don't wake up after six months and then say, oh, where am I now? But please make alert as soon as possible. And uh, because a Yelp, as Nada has pointed out, Yelp is available. Just shout. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, then the next question we have is, do you do student teaching practicals and when do you start the practicals. So um, I can maybe answer that question and then um, George and Nadia you can hop on or hop in and add but essentially um, you start your teaching practicals or rather you're teaching observations from your second year and this goes for foundation phase and intermediate phase students. So you start your observations in your second year and then you start on your first teaching practicum block for two months. And this carries on from, from your second year, your third year and your final year, which is your fourth year. Um, something that wasn't mentioned and that I hope you do know is that the B Ed program foundation phase and intermediate phase is both four years each and your postgrad, your PGCE um, course is one year each. So in first year you do not do any um, teaching practical to observations. However, there are plans in the making that that might change and hopefully that is the case because I think that my peers can attest to how rewarding and enriching it is to be in the classroom environment, um, experiencing the love and the care of the kids and just being that example and being a part of something bigger than yourself. I'm not sure if um, George or Nadia have anything to add to that? Yeah. I think the most important thing to realise is that in your second year, I personally felt like I knew everything because in first year you have all of the, um, the knowledge on paper and then you're excited to, to do your first year in the school for eight weeks and at a time and you think that you are this perfect teacher and you come back to class and you reflect on those practic uh, practices and you realize that oh but I could have done this differently I could have done that differently then you go into your third year um, having had that first experience and you instantly realize the difference and the improvements that you have made and specifically in fourth year and Zoe and Nadia will definitely see this next year as well you really hone in on your skills as an educator and your ability to adapt to any classroom at any specific moment you tend to swerve off from your planning and just instantly know what to do. And I think it's important to know that for four years, for three and a half years, you build up to this moment. And then in your final year, you make that final connection between theory and practice. And I think it's super important to realize that because throughout the years, you build on your pre-knowledge. So your first year gets carried over to your second year, gets carried over to your third year. And in final year, it's like the last piece of the super glue that holds everything together. And you know, everything will probably just be fine. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, George. Nadia, are you good? George said it all. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, and then while we do wait for questions, I think this is a very good question and I'm happy that we have the opportunity to ask Nadia this question. Um, is that Nadia, you done an EDP year. So you can maybe explain what is an EDP year and why is that an option for students? Okay, so I'm going to speak from a personal experience or, or view. So I had provisional acceptance from Stellenbosch University in the education faculty. Um, unfortunately, my maths mark, um, my pure maths mark had dropped in my final examinations for metric. Um, and that took my provisional acceptance from the faculty away. So I lost my spot because I did not make the requirement to study uh, B Ed foundation phase and I think it's 40% you must get for pure maths um, so yes I went to admin A at the uh, Stellenbosch University and I asked them what is the plan now because this is what I want to study I want to do to do education there's nothing else that I want to do um, how can I go about it 
and someone had suggested I did apply for a BA Humanities and I had got accepted for a BA Humanities. So they suggested that I go do a year of BA Humanities and do subjects, go through the BA modules and the education modules and choose subjects that align. Um, so I did Afrikaans and I did mathematics and I did English and then in my once I've completed that year of BA Humanities, then I can request to transfer into the B Ed program. And that's exactly what I did. So in my second year, I would transfer into first year education. And that allowed me to then, because I did the mathematics and the English and the Afrikaans in my BA year, it kind of exempted me from first year education, mathematics, English and Afrikaans because I did it in my BA year. So I just had less modules, um, missing those three because I did it in my BA year, but I still did all the other modules and I still carried on to second year and to third year. Um, so there is a way. Um, you just have to go to the BA building. They will suggest a plan for you. They will help you. You don't have to sit at home and do nothing. Um, there is a way. There's a plan. So, yeah. Thank you, Nadia. Um, and just to add on that, the faculty does have a program that's called, um, that's called Schematis, and they also offer a mock improvement course as well. We have um, a last question that we can take, which is essentially, how would you go about studying educational psychology through Stellenbosch University? I think Dr. Boeta or if you would like to answer that. I think I, I, I will start off and then my colleague Dr. Boeta can, can, can fill me in. But at first you will have to do your first B8 degree and then from there you must continue to do your, your honours B8 in educational psychology and then you must make sure that you pass that for 65%. It was said before that for certain degrees and for certain courses you must pass with at least 65 if you want to be enrolled as a master's student in educational psychology. And I can, I can promise you that uh, the competition is quite stiff and it, uh, the, the selection process is, 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 is very tough. But if you are lucky and if you get into the program, then, then you must make the best of it. Uh, a, a master's program uh, normally takes you two years if you are going to do it full time, which I would really suggest uh, because uh, I don't think there, there is time, you know, to, 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 to spend on other ac activities but to continue on the studies. Uh, education psychology is, is, not, uh, is not easy and on master's level it is indeed a, ch a challenge but of course the fact that we are putting out so many educational psychologists out there in in the community means that many of our students are indeed successful you must just persevere and you must work hard but uh, there is no short way you will have to go through all the steps until you get into until you are uh, uh, allowed into the master's program thank you Prof. Maybe I can just say that you must just make sure that you adhere to the uh, entrance requirements uh, for educational psychology um, and that you will find in our yearbooks um, that is available online. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so that, unfortunately, wraps up the live um, uh, broadcast um, discussion. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. But thank you for engaging with us and thank you for joining us. We hope that we've provided you some sort of clarity and ease to make the decision, which is essentially the correct decision to choose the Faculty of Education at Stellenbosch University. Please do have a look at our social media pages as well as the faculties, um, the faculty, sorry, the faculties, um, pages as well on the university's platform to get in contact with us and please reach out to us. Um, but to our matriculants who are heading into their final exam season, we would like to wish you all the very best and we cannot wait to see you at the front of the faculty in 2024. Thank you so much. Goodbye.